Can you hear me now? Okay. Jane Bray here, and today I'm going to be doing a playthrough of Haunting of Braidwood Manor. Um, it's from the app Choices. Um, so I don't, um, and it's only six chapters long, so I don't think there will be any problem getting through that. Thank you for everyone who's tuning in and everyone who's watching on the replay. Um, if you're not familiar with Choices, it's like a virtual choose-your-own-adventure type thing. Um, and since it's an app and they want to make money, some of the choices do require gems. But I bought a bunch um, just a little bit ago, so that should not be limiting any of our choices. And yes, I do say R because, um, as you might have guessed from the title, I will be giving my opinion on the choices, but I'm ultimately going to be looking to you guys in the chat to be making my decisions for me. So, I want this to be super interactive. I really want you guys to voice your opinions on what I should be doing. Um, and if it's not already apparent... This is my first ever live stream, so if there are any other technical issues, um, I apologize in advance, and I apologize for again for the ones we've already had. Um, if there are any other issues, uh, please don't be shy to let me know in the chats. Um, so we have the game here. Um, to be honest, I don't know anything about the story. I just basically searched horror games and the uh, in the app and um chose the shortest one so we'd have the most chance of getting through it all so i hope it's good <laughs> all right so haunting of braidwood manor Fun. <laughs> Choose my look. Okay, well, none of these look like me. Um, I'm just gonna choose this one. Sure. Yeah, we're, we're gonna go with this one. Okay, you wake up to the sound of footsteps coming down the hall. The music is really creepy. Hello? The floorboards creep just outside your door and a shadow creeps along the threshold. The shadow lingers for a moment and then a knock sounds at the door. For some reason you can't explain, you stay quiet, hoping whoever's outside will just move on. But knowing deep down that they won't. Whoever's there, <laughs> just leave me alone or stay out. I've got a knife. How should I respond, guys? I'm kind of thinking just leave me alone but I, I don't know maybe I do have a knife <laughs> should I be more fearful or more threatening what do you think okay I'm not really seeing any opinions I'm just gonna say just leave me alone Please, I'm begging you. The knocking sounds again harder this time, your teeth vibrating with each fall of the visitor's fist upon the door. Who are you? Just go, please. This is creepy. This would definitely creep me out if this happens. Um, the door starts to bend and crack, the wood splintering inward until the door flies off its hinges. No, stay out! Oh my. Um. Well. 
This just escalated. A silhouetted figure looms in your doorway, wreathed in fire. Please, don't come in. Girl, your room is on fire. It, I don't think you need to be worried about the guy coming in. You need to be worried about getting out. Did you forget me? The figure draws closer, the flames spreading through the room, choking the air with smoke. Okay, that's a creepy figure. Did you forget what you did to me? What? What you did to your only brother? What on earth is the story here? I'm intrigued. John, then please, I didn't do anything. Just, just leave me alone. You know I can't do that. Jonathan stretches out his arm, his hand closing around your throat. Let me go. I have to get away. Okay. Wake up or pull his arm away. So, I mean, I figure as much from the title of this chapter. This is all just a nightmare. So, um, our choices are to either wake up now or to pull his arm away. I don't know, I'm honestly a little torn because on one hand, the best way to avoid a nightmare, obviously, is by waking up. But I'm really intrigued and kind of want to know more about whatever happened with her brother, Jonathan. There is a story here and I think that staying in the dream, we might be able to learn more about our main character here and maybe that will be useful later on. Oh, it is. Yes. It'll like stop. Audio's fine. Hi, everybody. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but every once in a while, your video will freeze while the audio keeps going. Really? Yeah. So. I don't really know what to do about that. Me neither. <laughs> I just thought <laughs> I should let you know. <laughs> okay. It's not really that. You know, it's not that it's detracting. Not, you know, uh, I also don't know. I don't think it's happening enough in the game. It just predicts Okay, well, that's interesting. Also, remember. Right. First live stream, woo -hoo! Yeah! <laughs> I'm learning, guys, I'm learning. <laughs> um. Yeah, I don't know what to do about my camera stuttering. I'm sorry about that. Um, I'm not really sure that there's anything I can do to fix it without starting the stream over again. Um. But let's see, do we want to wake up or pull his arm away? Any opinions? Okay, well, I'm just going to um, pull his arm away because like I said, I kind of want to learn more. Get off me. You grab Jonathan's forearm and watch in horror as the flesh slows off, the fat crackling and burning beneath your hands. That is creepy. I can see why there is a warning for this. <laughs> a blistered strip of skin falls onto your bedspread and burns away, leaving nothing but ash behind. That is so creepy. Oh god, what are you? Did you think he was a normal human? <laughs> you made me like this, sister. Now I'm returning the favor. So I'm guessing that maybe there was a house fire and her brother burned alive and she survived and now she's dealing with survivor skills. That is my current working theory here. What do you mean? I didn't do anything. Liar. Okay. Very interesting beginning. Um, I'm sticking with the survivor skill theory. Um, let me know in the chat what you are thinking is going on. But... The dream is over. You wake up again, gulping desperate lungfuls of air. The sh 
Sheets grip tightly in your bald fists. Why does this keep happening? So this is a recurring nightmare. You grab your phone off the nightstand and dial a number. Victor, it's Bree. I need to talk. Now. Okay, thanks. I'll get dressed and head over. So who's Victor? Choose your outfits. I like this one best. Yeah. A short while later, you're sitting across from Victor in a booth at the campus coffee shop. So, sounds like the dreams are getting worse. So maybe a therapist or just a mentor? They're not just dreams. I'm sorry, Bree, but they are. Your brother's gone. And he's not coming back. So yeah, definitely some survivor's guilt going on here. I know he's not Victor. I identified the, bo the body myself when they pulled him out of what was left of his car. Okay, so it wasn't a house fire. It was a car wreck. So, huh. Why is she getting the blame then? Okay. But he's, he's not at rest. He's angry. Angry at me. Why? But why? <laughs> Thank you, Victor. What reason could he have to be angry at you? You look away, unable to meet Victor's gaze. Okay, so our main character here knows something more. All I know is I can't take another night of this, Victor. I have to go to Braidwood Manor today. So what does Braidwood Manor have to do with all of this? Can you drive me there or not? You mean, can I help you put yourself in an incredibly dangerous situation? Please. You're the only one I can trust. Or, if you won't do it, I'll find someone else who will. I mean, you're the only one I can trust is like a good way to kind of, um... Almost guilt trip <laughs> into it? It's like, hey, I really trust you, so you'll do this for me, right? But at the same time, I still don't know who this Victor guy is, so do... Is he the only one we can trust? I'm assuming so, since we called him here. Um... The, if you don't do it, I'll find someone else who will. I mean, that is really backing him into a corner. That, like, I feel like that's one of the best ways to convince someone to do something if they think you're putting yourself in danger. Like, I'm going to do this one way or another, so either you help or you don't. So that's the one I'm leaning towards. Um, but I'm watching the chat to see if anyone else has... An opinion, option one, you're the only one I can trust. We're taking the nice routes. <laughs> okay. All right, we'll take the nice routes with, um, you're the only one I can trust. He takes your hand in his, it's expression softening. Okay, so that seems to be going well for us. Don't you understand? If something happened to you, I'd never forgive myself. Okay, this seems a little more intimate than a therapist relationship. I want to protect you, Bree. I want... Something I can't give. At least, not right now. Okay, so it seems like um, Victor has feelings for us, but we're dealing with too much stuff with Jonathan's death. I keep getting wig hair in my mouth, so sorry I keep like... <laughs> Messing with my hair? I'm not used to having this long hair. <laughs> Victor leans back in his seat and lets out a sigh. Let's pretend I'm willing to go along with this. I still don't understand what you're hoping to find in some old house. You can't actually expect to find ghosts there, right? I don't know. I've done the research. Braidwood Manor is for real. But what does this have to do with Jonathan? I'm really confused here. If there's anywhere I can learn what causes spirits to linger after death, okay. If I'd waited like one more second, <laughs> it's there. Spirits, this isn't an episode of Ghost Hunter Spree. This is real life. I know how it sounds, but for my brother's sake, I have to try something. 
now are you going to drive me or am I going to have to take a bus? So we eventually got around to basically option two of I'm going there one way or another, are you going to help? Okay, okay. I'll drive you there after my shift. I just hope you know what you're getting yourself into. I hope we do too, because I have no idea what's going on. <laughs> that afternoon, you're sitting in the passenger seat of Victor's car, watching the landscape fly by out the window. I can't believe I'm doing this. You really didn't have a choice. <laughs> Cheer up, it's not like you're driving me to an execution. I hope we're not gonna die. Sure feels that way. You know, Victor keeps saying he doesn't believe in ghosts and stuff, but yet he's so nervous about taking us to Braidwood Manor. So, if he doesn't believe there actually are spirits there, why is he af so afraid of this? Then you should make the most of our last moments together. <laughs> oh boy. <laughs> Be fun. Now. <laughs> That is the best way to handle someone thinking you're going to your death. <laughs> Be fun. Now. Okay, okay. How about a game of I Spy? <laughs> I spy with my little eyes something white, he says, while it is snowing outside. Hmm. <laughs> is it snow or please tell me it's not snow? <laughs> I mean, my first thought was snow but I was also really exasperated at it so either one I definitely don't think this is an op uh, choice that's gonna have a lot of um, bearing on our overall decisions but I'll wait for just a second to see if anyone has any opinion on um, how I should guess that it's snow <laughs> and I'm gonna grab a snack So I have a nice bowl of some like Halloween snack mix here. Okay. <laughs> I'm just gonna say, is it snow? Wow, you're so good at this game. <laughs> you burst out laughing as Victor grins at you. Okay, that was not that funny. Thanks for cheering me up, Victor. You're the best, or why do you put up with me anyway? <laughs> so, we're either being really nice to him, or we're gonna start putting ourselves down for absolutely no reason at all. When he's the one that made the bad joke. So, I'm not going... I, I personally don't really want to choose the second option, because... Um, he's the one making bad jokes, we're the ones putting up with him. <laughs> Um, so I'm leaning towards you're the best. And I'm not seeing anyone arguing with me. So I'm gonna go with you're the best. Finally, someone agrees with me. I always knew I was the best, but it feels good to hear someone else say it. Well, now I'm regretting it. Okay, in that case, I take it back. Okay, maybe I have more in common with this character than I thought. <laughs> Sorry, Bree, too late for that. <laughs> Darn. Oh, CF, you better not be getting into that cheese and cracker tray. Um, Victor cranes his neck to look up through the windshield as the landscape changes outside. Wow, look at those trees. They are trees. In all the snow, it's almost untouched out here. No other cars inside either. Well, a uh, road to a creepy haunted house sounds about right. I'm not surprised. Who in their right mind would want to drive all the way out to Backwoods Manor? <laughs> Victor laughs as you roll your eyes. So, do you want to tell me more about this place? Like, why is it so haunted? Well... Are you sure? It's not a happy story, or it was a dark and stormy night, and no, Seth, those are not for you. Thank you for uh, making a guest appearance, though. So, are we going to... 
ask him, um, do you really want to hear the story or are we going to launch into storytelling of it was a dark and stormy night? I'm personally leaning towards it was a dark and stormy night because I'm just dramatic like that. Let's go with that. The wind howled mournfully through the hills like the cry of a, uh, yep, <laughs> there's a kitty. Sorry, sorry, that was not part of what I was reading, obviously. I was responding to the chat. <laughs> um, okay, the wind howled mournfully through the hills, like the cry of a... Uh... Whoa, it's not that long of drive. Just give me the facts. <laughs> You're no fun. No, I mean, he ice by snow. That's, that's fun, right? All right, here's what happens. So Braidwood Manor was built around the turn of the last century for the Waverly family, who just arrived here from England. By all accounts, life in the manor was idyllic, until the father went off to war. Let me guess, this is where things get ugly. Very. When he returned, he found his three youngest children dead from poisoning. The eldest daughter, Eleanor, had her throat cuts. That's terrible. Why did you tell me that? You asked! <laughs> hey, you asked! <laughs> there we go. Anyway, ever since, people have reported all sorts of strange occurrences happening at Braidwood Manor. But we still don't know what exactly happened there. If we can find out why the Waverly children never, never passed on to whatever comes after death, I'll be able to help my brother find peace. Well, probably the unsolved aspect of their murder. But it sounds like you know what happened to your brother. But it sounds also like you're hiding something, so. Bree. Look, I know what you think. That I'm just being crazy or that I need to let him go or whatever, but... I don't think that at all. I think... I think you've been through a lot, and if this is what will... If this is what you feel you have to do, then I'll help you do it. I just want you to be safe, that's all. Victor, thanks for being so understanding or I can take care of myself even though I asked you to drive me here and I keep like asking all this of you when you finally just offered to help me on your own, no, I can take care of myself. <laughs> I feel like thanks for being so understanding is the better way to answer this. Um... Yeah, I can take care of myself just seems like a rude response after we asked him to drive us. Um, but when options come up, um, go ahead and be don't be shy about saying what option you think I should choose. Just as soon as you see the options, go ahead and spam the chat with what you want me to do. Because <laughs> I will choose differently if that's what you want. Of course, that's what I'm here for. Understanding stuff. You're such a dork. A few minutes later, Victor takes a right at the weathered sign and the road changes from asphalt to coarse gravel. At the end of the drive, Braidwood Manor looms like a storm cloud on the horizon. It's dark in windows full of nameless foreboding. This must be the place. Yeah, this is it. Obviously. <laughs> you get out of the car and gawk up at the manor's once majestic facade. Your heart beating faster in your chest. Braidwood Manor. Pictures are one thing, but seeing it in person. Yeah, it's even creepier than I imagined. Are you sure I can't come with you? Oh wow, we're doing this all alone? I thought he was coming. Sorry, Victor. I have to do this by myself. This seems really stupid. I know we're, like, playing her, but this seems really stupid. If you insist, when should I pick you up? Tomorrow morning? If I'm still alive. You continue to stare up at the manor, barely hearing Victor. Uh, I'll call you. I don't know how long I'll be. Okay, do you need to charge your phone or anything? Somehow I doubt that place is wired for electricity. 
You glance down at your phone and see the battery icon has turned red. Oh boy! Crap, 15%. You didn't charge your phone before you went to stay the night alone at a creepy haunted house? Really? I've got my car charger if you want to use it. Please? It won't take more than, I don't know, 15 minutes? Half an hour tops. Tutorial. Some choices cost diamonds. Yep, here's the gym thing. Um... Yeah, so these choices are generally pretty important. And of course, if you don't choose the one that costs you diamonds, you miss out on stuff. Um, charging your phone will give Victor a way to keep in touch with you while you're in Braidwood Manor and possibly impact your relationship with him later in the story. I don't really care about my relationship with him. I care about staying alive. And I feel like... Um, not having a point of contact with the outside world is stupid. But it's gonna be up to you. So, it's um, 12 gems for us to charge our phone. Or we can keep it off to save battery. Because I'm sure nothing bad will happen in this haunted house, right? We'll be fine. Perfectly fine. Um... But we can risk it. We can definitely save the gems for later decisions. Go in and risk the scary haunted house all alone with um, no contact with anyone in the outside world. No way to call the, call the police or anything like that if we're in trouble. <laughs> Charge the phone! <laughs> okay, so we're not making the stupid horror movie decisions. We are charging the phone then. Thank you. <laughs> I was really hoping you would choose that. <laughs> And 12 gems really isn't that much. But glad to hear it. Let's get you charged up. You hand your phone over and Victor plugs it into the car adapter while you climb back into the passenger seats. I know you're eager to get started, but at least now you won't have to hitchhike your way back to campus. Yeah, that would be way more terrifying than a haunted house. Thanks for driving me, by the way, and thanks in advance for driving me back. <laughs> hey, no worries. I can't think of a better way to spend a Saturday than risking my life on icy roads with you. Well, I'm the one risking my life in a haunted house here. I'm trying to be serious for once, Victor. So am I. Victor grins at you and you bite back a smile. I know I haven't been the easiest person to be friends with since... since my brother died. But I want you to know how much I appreciate you being there for me, no matter what, even if I don't always know how to say it. You don't have to. I know. You do? More or less. Victor puts his hand on yours. You feel a flush rising to your cheeks as he leans closer. I thought this was supposed to be a horror game. Okay, should we kiss him or pull away is the choice. Um... I mean, I'm not really invested in the romance of this at all. I'm just trying to stay alive in the haunted house. Um, maybe kissing him will make him more invested and more likely to save us. But that is also kind of man manipulative on um, our part. So, <laughs> um, should I kiss him or pull away? I mean, he seems like a nice guy. I just, I don't know. I really don't know. Um, and I'm not seeing, nope, pull away. Okay, we're pulling away. Victor, I... I'm sorry, Brie. That was... I shouldn't have done that. It's okay, really. Are you sure? I'm sure. How's my phone doing, by the way? Victor checks the battery, then hands your phone back to you. Looks like you're good to go. Wow. I want a phone that charges that fast. Thanks, Victor. Hey, uh, I know you're going to be busy looking for ghosts and stuff, but if you get spare moments, do you mind if I call you? I'm going to be trying to stay alive. I'm not sure how chatting on the phone will help with that. You know, just check in, see how things are going. Um, of course, I'd like that, or if we're friends, you don't have to ask permission. 
I mean, I kind of feel like the second one, it, a friend doesn't really have to ask permission to call you. And I'd like that, I feel like, is kind of giving mixed signals based on the fact that he just tried to kiss me. Um, but I mean, it's not really a bad thing to say. Yeah, I'd like for you to call me so that I'm not sitting there freaking out on my own all night. I'm still leaning towards the, we're friends, you don't have to ask permission. gonna get a recess. Then go with our friends. Right, of course. Not sure what I was thinking. You're so weird. Says the girl who's about to spend the night in a haunted house. Bye, Victor. See you later. Be careful in there, okay? Okay, because our phone is charged, we've unlocked extra scenes later in the book. So, yay! Hopefully that will end up being a really good thing that we get. As the taillights of Victor's car recede into the distance, you take a deep breath and turn to face Braidwood Manor. Well... I guess it's just you and me now. We're speaking to a house. Maybe we are crazy. You make your way up the ice like steps leading to the manor, taking care not to slip. <laughs> I just thought, like, goes to stay the night at a haunted house, scared for your life, dies slipping on ice. <laughs> Soon you're sitting before the manor's great oak doors. You grasp the handle. Here goes nothing. End of chapter, probably. Oh, no. You cross the threshold, letting the door fall close behind you, and look out across the dilapidated foyer. Well, um, this place is nice. <laughs> wow, I can't believe it's all still here. You take in the splintered furniture, the threadbare carpet, and the glittering wreckage of the fallen chandelier. Are you here to make sure I don't get too scared, Seth? Thank you. You're weirded out by the way, huh? If what they say about this place is true, I might be able to get some answers here. I could help my brother find peace. You shrug off your backpack and set it by the staircase. A sudden creak of floorboards makes the hair stand up on the back of your neck. <gasps> Should we ask who's there? Or go investigate? Oh, either way is so stupid in a horror movie. Girl, did you watch any horror movies before you decided to go stay the night in a haunted house? <laughs> Cause I mean, um, asking who's there is um, asking for trouble. Going to investigate is even worse. Um, but at least you're still kind of in control when you go to investigate. You can choose to be sneakier with it, I guess? If you ask who's there, you're basically saying, Hey, I'm here, come and get me! So, um... Oh... Either way, I feel like it's a bad decision. But, um... Who's there? <laughs> We're asking who's there? Okay... Who's there? There's no reply. Shocker. Only the sound of your own heartbeats. Ghosts don't typically reply when you ask who's there. Fun fact. Never mind, I guess. You cross the foyer, your feeling of unease growing with each step you take. Maybe it's just the house settling. Maybe it's something more. Maybe it's Maybelline. How messed up am I that I actually want it to be a ghost? Pretty messed up. You make a slow circuit through the room. The faded portraits gazing down at you through a century's worth of dust. Just then, you hear a sound like tiny feet running up the stairs and whirl around. Who's there? Whoever you are, just stay away from me or don't be afraid, I want to talk. Well, um, just stay away from me, I'm not sure what would 
work on a ghost. Um, but personally, I'd be, you know, wanting the creepy ghost to stay away from me. But um, don't be afraid, I just want to talk. I don't think the ghost is afraid of you. I highly doubt that. Um, but we did technically come here to talk to ghosts and learn about them, so I think that's probably the more honest answer? I don't know, though. Um, either way, we're in a bad position. Um, so should we be telling the ghosts to stay away? Or should we start trying to strike up the conversation with the ghosties? No opinion. Um, well, we did come here to talk, so your words are met with silence. You feel a shiver run up your spine as you notice your backpack missing from where you left it by the stairs. Oh, great. What did we pack in the backpack? Okay, this is starting to scare me. You walk over to the foot of the stairs and find a little tin soldier staring up at you from the bottom step. That's... Yeah, that's really creepy. Oh my. Things are getting spooky. This definitely wasn't here before. And my backpack definitely was. You look up the staircase to the second floor landing. Tin soldiers guard every other stair. Their little painted rifles slung over their shoulders. Oh, so creepy. What exactly am I dealing with here? Ghosts? Child ghosts, probably? Ooh. You follow the trail soldiers up to the... <laughs> yeah, it's creepy! <laughs> you follow the trail soldiers up the stairs to the second floor, gripping the banister for supports. Yep, yeah, who put these here? How many are there? At the top of the stairs, you find your backpack surrounded by a small battalion of tin soldiers, bayonets at the ready. What on earth? So, should I reach for the backpack that is being guarded by the creepy soldiers? Or should I leave it? I mean, I don't know what I packed in the backpack. I don't know um, how necessary it is we have it, but I'm sure it's like all of our... All of our things are in there, probably. Um, so I think it's kind of important to have it, but I'm kind of scared to reach into the circle of tin soldiers. These little things are really creeping me out. Uh, but I kind of want to know what'll happen if I reach for it. <laughs> and this girl seems like she makes bad decisions like that. <laughs> um, any opinions? on what I should do. <laughs> okay, we're gonna take a chance. We're gonna reach for the backpack. You stretch out your hand, eyeing the soldier's bayonets warily, and take hold of one of your backpack's canvas straps. Oh my, I'm scared. Please don't come to life and stab me! That's basically what I'm thinking. What are you so scared of? They're just toys. Who are you? <laughs> are you a ghost? <laughs> ah! <laughs> you scream and stumble backwards. Pass the lip of the topmost stair. Oh my. Your foot misses the next step and you go tumbling down the staircase, landing hard at the bottom. This is off to a terrible start. <laughs> is that... Okay. Your head bounces against the marble floor and everything goes black. Okay, I think that's the end of chapter one. Oh no, wow, this is a long chapter. You come to in an unfamiliar room, the soft light of the moon slanting through the window. Huh? Where, where am I? This is so weird. Braidwood Manor is over a hundred years old. This room looks like, like something out of time. Like, the turn of the century was only yesterday. 
which does not fit with how the foyer looks. The foyer was falling apart, and this room looks perfectly pristine. That's weird. You hear a soft click as the doorknob turns. Who is it? And the door slowly opens. <gasps> okay, that's chapter one. Let's continue to chapter two, Out of Time. Your night in Braidwood Manor has only gotten stranger. You watch with your heart in your throat as the bedroom door creaks open. To reveal a young woman dressed in the fashions of a bygone era, her dark eyes fixed on you. Don't be afraid, Bree. I mean, I don't mean you any harm. Who are, who are you? <laughs> My name is Eleanor Waverly. Welcome to Braidwood Manor. This is weird. Wait, you're Eleanor Waverly, as in that Eleanor Waverly. I'm afraid so. You must have at least a hundred questions right now. So you're a ghost? I am so confused by what's going on. Yeah, you could say that. And I'll do my best to answer them, but I must ask that you be patient with me. There's still so much I don't understand about this place, this existence. Okay, yeah, so definitely a ghost. Tell me, okay. So, are we asking, where am I, what are you, or how did I get here? Um, I mean, all good questions. Where am I? Um, sorry, my tight got hooked on something. <laughs> um, I mean, where am I? Definitely a room in Braidwood Manor, but it feels different. It feels weird. So that I still think is a good question. Um, what are you? Probably a ghost. How did I get here is, I think, the best question, and that's what I'm seeing in the chat. So I'm going to go with, how did I get here? Uh, about that. It seems my little brother Simon gave you a scare and you fell and bumped your head. I carried you upstairs and put you to bed. I hope you don't mind. Well, at least these ghosts are, um, nice. Why does Braidwood Manor have such a, um, like bad stigma around it if the ghosts are so nice. I'm confused. Uh, not at all, I guess. You carried me? Yes, I just said that. Are you feeling alright? Yeah, I think so. I just didn't expect that, I guess. Well, in this lore, apparently ghosts can carry people. I'm not as fragile as I look, Brie. How do you know my name? Okay, so we're have we're able to ask more questions. So I can ask, where am I and what are you? I want to ask, how do you know my name? But that's not one of the options. <laughs> um, so, um, what are you? I'm assuming some kind of ghost, but maybe we'd be able to get more specifics. Um, and where am I? I'm I'm still weirded out by this by why this room looks pristine when the foyer was so much in disarray. Um, what are you? Okay. You're kind of call me a ghost, and I suppose that's what I am. I mean, that's what I figured. Are we getting more? But I don't feel like a ghost. What do ghosts feel like? <laughs> what do you feel like then? I feel the same as I did in life, except it feels like something's missing, or like I've taken a wrong turn. I feel lost, forgotten. This is interesting. Okay, so I'm gonna ask, where am I, since that's the one we haven't asked yet? Braidwood Manor, of course. Okay, then when am I? Yeah, that's the question. That's an altogether more difficult question. I know that in your world, this house is a shadow of its former self. My world? So, we're, we're somewhere else. I don't know, Bree. I've come to think of this place as a memory. 
The rest of the world kept moving and we just stayed the same. Now it's my turn to ask you a few questions. Okay. To start with, why are you here? I'm here to interview ghosts. Um, I'm here because I was hiking and got lost or I want to learn more about life after death. Um, why would we lie? She's been really nice and forthcoming so I don't know why we would lie to her and say we were hiking. I feel like there's no reason not to say that we are here to learn more about life after death. I think that's a pretty fair answer, so... Yeah. Um, I need to learn everything I can about, about ghosts. So, you're not afraid to be here. You wanted to meet me. Well, I won't pretend that this isn't a bit unusual. But yes, I wanted to come here. I wanted to meet you and your siblings. Why might I ask? You look across the ground to Braidwood Manor and suppress a shiver. It's... it's complicated. Are we getting the full story now? Maybe? As you peer through the frosted glass of the window, you notice a dark shape standing amidst the trees on the edge of the property. Is it Jonathan? Yes, it's Jonathan. Ooh, interesting. Jonathan! Your brother's ghost melts into the trees, leaving you looking out at a bare expanse of white snow. Eleanor moves to stand beside you, and she lays a hand on your shoulder. I think I understand. You were haunted before you ever set foot in this place. Eleanor, this is why I need to learn more about you. About your world, otherwise... I'll never be able to help my brother. So he is actively haunting us, it seems like. Just let me stay here, please. I promise I won't cause you any trouble. A frown creases Eleanor's eyebrows, and then she smiles slightly. Come with me. Where are we going? I'm giving you the grand tour, of course. She's so nice. After all, if you're to stay here, you may as well get to know the house. You hurry to keep up with Eleanor as she strides out into the hall. So, you're letting me stay? Of course. We never get any visitors anymore, and it would be nice to have company. You follow Eleanor out onto the second floor landing of the Grand Foyer, gasping at the sight of the familiar room restored to its former glory. Oh, wow. So beautiful. What was it like growing up here? I didn't grow up here. Well, not entirely. We left England when I was 15. That must have been hard. I certainly threw more than my fair share of tantrums, but I came to like it here in my own way. Still, I would have liked to see England again before Eleanor trails off, turning away from you to continue down the staircase. Well, let's not talk about that. I'm sorry. How exactly did you die? <laughs> Don't be. It's not your fault. Just then, you hear a sudden crash from somewhere downstairs. Oh? What was that? Eleanor looks more pained for a moment. Then her expression resolves into a tired smile. Nothing you need to worry about. There's something else going on here. Okay, if you say so. When can I meet the rest of the family? The other ghost might not be as nice as she is. Very soon, but there's something you should know. What's that? Unlike myself, my siblings aren't aware that they're... Oh. That they're what? Dead. Oh, wow, that's... Okay. What? But how come you know? Or why haven't you told them? I want to know how she knows. Like, I would understand her siblings were younger than her. That would, um... Be a big shock to find out that you're dead <laughs> I feel like so I can kind of understand why she hasn't told them um, but how come you know how does she know that she's dead if her siblings can't tell that is a very good question um, do we have any opinions I think we're gonna go with how come you know. I'd rather not say. 
I'm sorry, Bree. I am so intrigued. It's just too painful. Uh, oh, we're getting, we're able to ask both questions anyway. So why haven't you told them? How can you ask such a thing? What do you mean? I'm sorry, I shouldn't be cross with you. You can't possibly imagine what it's like to live with the knowledge that you're not really living at all. Trust me, Bree, ignorance is bliss. I wouldn't dream of taking that away from my siblings. You're welcome to stay, but don't say anything to the children that would upset them. Don't talk about where you're from or what the world is like beyond these walls. Just let the children be children, Bree. That's all I ask. All right, Eleanor. I won't say anything. I promise. We'll need an explanation for who you are and why you're here. I know. I'll introduce you as their new governess. Do you have any experience as such? Um, I did some babysitting in high school. Same thing, right? Perfect. It won't be difficult. You'll see. Simon's the only one who really needs watching. Clarissa and Thomas are old enough to look after themselves. Those are your other siblings? Yes, they're 14 and 12, respectively. Simon's only 8. They're all waiting in the parlor if you're ready to meet them. Although it would be better if you wore something else. I was kind of wondering about that. What's wrong with what I'm wearing? Nothing at all. It's very pretty, but it's, well, anachron anachronistic. Oh. Well, what am I supposed to wear? Wait, did you say I was pretty? <laughs> Are we trying to flirt with a ghost? <laughs> um, I think, well, what am I supposed to wear is... Like, do you have clothes for me? Is the question, I think. Sorry, my cat was meowing in his sleep. <laughs> um, let me see. You follow Eleanor back upstairs to another bedroom. She goes to the wardrobe and starts searching through dresses. I should have a dress you can wear. We're about the same size, after all. That's convenient. She pulls out a dark purple gown with elegant white collar and holds it up to you. Ooh, this ought to fit you nicely. I'll give you some privacy while you try it on. What will you wear? Um, I mean, I feel like we should wear the right decade. Cause if we walk downstairs around the kids in um, our normal everyday clothes, they're going to know something's up because um, fashion has changed considerably over the years. So I'm surprised it's even getting, giving us the option. We really need to wear um, our... <laughs> A decade attire. Yeah, I'm gonna. Okay, that that one's gonna cost diamonds. So, do we want to spend the diamonds in order to dress appropriately? I just feel like it'll be so weird if we wear our normal clothes. The kids will be so suspicious, and I think we'll lose trust with Eleanor. And I don't want to lose trust with a ghost. <laughs> don't be suspicious? Okay, we're not going to be suspicious. Don't be suspicious. Don't be suspicious. Eleanor comes back in to check on you, and her eyes go wide. Oh my. How do I look? Perfect. Really? I've never worn anything like this. It suits you. And now that you look the part of a governess, are you ready to meet your charges? Yeah, I think I am. Lead the way. This is not what I was expecting from this. At all. Um, it was like spooky in the beginning and now it's... I don't know. It's, it's interesting. But we still have Ghost Jonathan to worry about, so... Eleanor leads you back downstairs to the parlor where the three younger Waverly siblings sit expectantly. You recognize Simon, the boy from the night before, and he averts his eyes sheepishly when you meet his gaze. Children, this is... We know who she is. She's just like Simon said she would be. 
Yeah, that's the girl I saw. What a beautiful dress. Thomas narrows his eyes suspiciously at you. We haven't had a visitor in ages. Who are you exactly? This is Bree. She's your new governess, and I expect you to treat her with the utmost respect. Thomas looks outraged. Governess? I don't need a governess. I'm almost as old as she is. Besides, you already take care of us, Eleanor. Okay, so we can either say, aren't you going to give me a chance? Or, don't worry, I'm not staying long. Um, I mean, my first gut instinct is the don't worry, I'm not staying long. Because that seems more comforting. But at the same time, I feel like that might raise more suspicion of why aren't you staying long. Um, but aren't you going to give me a chance? Doesn't really make a case for us. Either. Option two, don't worry, I'm not staying long. Okay. You're not, but... Eleanor flashes you an annoyed look. Ugh, that's what I was worried about. Bree will only be with us a short while before she has to get back home. Glad to hear it. Well, you're rude. <laughs> Thomas, please forgive my brother's coarse manners, Bree. I, for one, am very excited to have another lady to talk to. What does that make me? Uh... You're more like our mother. Eleanor sighs heavily. Wonderful. You can see why I need a break, Bree. Oh, nonsense, this will be fun, or, yeah, these kids seem like a handful. Um, I mean, I'm kind of leaning towards the second in, um, to be honest, if we were being honest, yeah, these kids seem like a handful, but I don't really think we should say that right in front of the kids. I don't think that's very tactful. Um, <laughs> so we should probably go with the nonsense, um, this will be fun, even though I don't think this will be fun. I'm a little worried about these ghost children who don't know they're ghosts. Um. Okay. I can't wait to get to know all of you better. I see I chose my assistant well. In any case, it's about time you three went to bed. Uh, Eleanor, can't we stay up just a little longer? I am so confused by what time it is. But, I mean, I guess that's kind of the whole point of there is no time. <laughs> like, this whole thing is out of time. It's weird. Ah, uh, Eleanor, can't we stay up just a little longer? Eleanor relaxes, her stern look giving way to a smile. I suppose that'd be alright. Just this once, though. Bree, would you help me fix the children some hot cider before bed? Of course. A short while later, you and Eleanor bring cups of hot cider out for the children. Yay, thank you, Miss Bree. Just Bree is fine, Simon. You hand a cup of cider to Thomas. Thank you. Was that a thank you I heard out of you, Thomas? What a rare treat. Hm. Eleanor, why do we never have cocoa in the evenings anymore like we used to? Eleanor turns her face away, her eyes suddenly sad. Um, it's just been harder to get these days. But you're able to get cider? <laughs> oh, that's too bad. I used to love when mother and father would let us stay up late and... Yes, well, let's not talk about them, shall we? Okay, sorry, Eleanor. That's quite alright. Bree, I can put the children to bed if you'd like to get some rest. I know you've had an eventful day. Sure, okay. Should I stay in the same room upstairs? Of course. I'll help you find your way back. Eleanor leads you out of the parlor and back up the foyer, her voice dropping to a whisper. There's one more thing I should tell you about Braidwood Manor. Uh, what's that? Whatever you think you hear, never leave your room after dark. Do you understand? What all the ghosts seem nice. Why are we afraid of going out after dark? What else is going on here? <laughs> oh, 
So we can either say, okay, no leaving my room after dark, got it, or what happens if I do? I mean, if the ghost says scary things happen at night in the haunted house, um, I'm definitely not leaving my room after dark, got it. Um, but I also want to know what's going on because I thought the problem with this house was the Waverly ghosts and um, they're all nice. So what happens after dark? Yes. Eleanor gives you a calculating look, her brow furrowed. You don't want to find out, believe me. Well, if you just tell me, <laughs> that would be great. Um, okay. Good night, Bree. I want to know what's happening. Okay, so tuck yourself in bed and lie down thinking hard. Am I losing my mind or is all of this really happening? It's just another dream. <laughs> and how can I get Eleanor to tell me why she and her siblings are all trapped here? I suppose I'll have to earn her trust first. Better make sure not to break any of her rules. As you lie there in the darkness, you're suddenly startled out of your reverie by a notification on your phone. Huh? Oh, it's from Victor. So we're still able to get text from him. Just one check-in. Still think you're crazy for staying up there by yourself. But I guess that's what makes you you, and I wouldn't have it any other way. Oh, that's sweet of him to... Just then, you notice a curious sound beneath the howling of the wind outside. Is someone crying? You strain your ears and catch the sound again, a low mournful wail that seems to echo through the halls. Is that Eleanor? You get out of bed and hesitate before your bedroom door. Eleanor said not to leave my room after dark, but if someone's in trouble... Got into the hall or look through the keyhole first? Um, I mean, she said not to leave the room after dark. I feel like we should not be going out into the hall. I think that's a pretty stupid decision. Um, that being said, I hate looking through peepholes, looking through keyholes. Oh, that freaks me out so much. <laughs> but yeah, I think that's the smarter one, even though, oh, that gives me so much anxiety. You kneel down to peer through the keyhole. Ugh, seeing... <laughs> That's gonna be the creepiest thing in this for me. <laughs> seeing nothing but the empty hallway beyond. Looks like the coast is clear. And whoever's making that sound, it's only getting louder. That's it, I'm going out... Why? Why are you going out there? She said not to. Oh, this is stupid. This is stupid. This is so stupid. You step out into the hall, shutting the door softly behind you. You follow the sound through the manor's twisting halls, down the stairs of the foyer, and deeper into the house. Deeper into the house than you thought possible. Just how big is this place? As you come to a long hallway ending in a solitary door. A door covered in rusted locks and bound up in iron. Uh, I don't like this. You draw close to the doors to time-worn wood and hear the sounds of weeping beyond. Don't. Don't do it. She said, no matter what you hear, like, I think there's stuff making false noises. Ugh. The noise starts to sound less like weeping and more like plaintive cries of a wounded beast. Oh, no, don't, 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 don't. Whatever's making that sound is just past this door. Don't. Do we get a choice not to? Hello? Is anyone in there? The sob's quiet, followed by a sick silence that feels like all the air's been sucked out of the room. Why? Oh no! The door suddenly starts shaking. Fire explodes from around the door frame. This is like the nightmares! Oh no. You jump back. Fingers slither up your arm and yank down on your wrist. Eee! Sorry, Sith. Okay, that was the end of chapter two. Okay, so this is getting spooky again. I was a little concerned because it started to seem not so spooky. Um, so, yeah, no, I don't want to watch an ad. Okay. Let's go on to chapter three, lock and key. 
As you stand facing the mysterious door deep in the heart of Redwood Manor, you feel cold fingers gripping your arm. Ah! You whirl in a panic, shaking off your attacker. Probably Eleanor. Being like, what are you doing? Get off of me! Oh, Simon. Sorry, Miss Bree. Simon, you really have to stop scaring me like that. I didn't mean to. You shake some rapid- you take some- not shake. You take some rapid calming breaths and regain your composure. I know, I just didn't expect that. What are you doing out of bed? I'm thirsty. Simon, so we can ask what's behind that door? Or did you hear a strange noise just now? I doubt he knows what's behind the door, and I don't want to prompt suspicion from him. I am curious if he heard the strange sound, too. <laughs> Option two, did you hear a strange sound just now? Simon looks suddenly uneasy. I don't know. Eleanor says it's just the wind, but... It sounded like it was coming from that door. We should not be making Simon suspicious of what's going on. You start to walk down the hallway toward the locked door again. Bad idea. Don't touch it. Eleanor says we're not to go near it, and we're never, ever to unlock it. What is behind that door? Do you... Do you have the key? Simon pulls a burnished antique key out of his pocket and holds it out for you to see. Why does he have it? We all have one. Oh, okay. You turn your attention back toward the door and notice that there are four locks keeping it shut. So they all have to unlock it. What on earth is going on? Four keys for four locks. Yeah. I'll have to get my hands on all of them if I want to find out what Eleanor's hiding. Uh, Miss Bree, why are you out of bed? Uh, I was just sleepwalking. Can you promise not to tell Eleanor about it? It'll be our little secrets. Okay. Now let's get you something to drink, then it's back to bed. You put an arm around Simon's shoulder and lead him back out of the hallway, throwing one last look back at the locked door. I'll be back for you later. The following morning, you wake in the guest's bedroom of Braidwood Manor and get dressed for the day. Guess it wasn't all a dream. As you make your way downstairs, you bump into Eleanor on the second floor landing. Good morning, Bree. I was wondering if you'd ever get out of bed. What do you mean? What time is it? Ten o'clock or so? Oh, sorry. I should have been up to help with breakfast, huh? It would have been nice, but not necessary. I'm suddenly very suspicious of Eleanor. She's hiding something. Oh, okay, is there anything I can do to make it up to you? There's nothing right now. Feel free to spend the morning as you see fit. The children would love to spend time with you if you'd like. Oh, <laughs> either somehow I don't think Thomas would agree, or what if I want to spend the morning with you? I mean, I kind of... <laughs> yeah, she is us. Um, I kind of want to spend the morning with Eleanor because I feel like I'll get more answers from her about ghostly stuff than I will the kids, considering the kids don't know anything. Like, why am I so busy playing governess? Like, I know it's to fool the kids, but still. Why am I so busy playing governess when I'm here for answers? I don't get what Eleanor's playing at with this. So I want to spend more time with her to get more answers. Boss, it's not up to me. It is up to you. <laughs> um, so I hope you agree with me.
Eleanor blushes, turning suddenly shy. I didn't mean like that. <laughs> With me? Oh, well. Sorry, I didn't mean to make you nervous. I just want answers. Your relationship with Eleanor has improved. Okay. <laughs> you didn't make me nervous. I find that hard to believe. Eleanor's blush deepens further. It's okay, Eleanor, if you don't want to spend time with me. That's not it at all. It's just that... Just that what? I, I have to go. I'm sorry. Eleanor hurries up the stairs past you, her long skirts fluttering behind her. I'm not trying to flirt with Eleanor. <laughs> I'm just trying to get answers. <laughs> you continue downstairs and step into the parlor where Simon sits on the floor pouring over a wood framed case. Morning, Simon. What's that you got there? Good morning, Miss Bree. Here, take a look. You lean over his shoulder and see that the case is full of glittering butterflies, jeweled beetles, and fuzzy moths, all affixed to the backing with tiny pins. Oh, wow. Is this your book collection? Insect collection. And yes, it's mine. Did you catch all of these? All the ones that are native to the this region. Father brought the others home for me when he traveled. See the scorpion? She came all the way from Egypt. You must know a lot about bugs, uh, sorry, insects. I know everything about them. I've read almost all the books in our library. When I grew up, I want to be an entomologist. Wow, big word. Thanks. Do you like insects? Um, so I can either say I think they're fascinating or I don't mind them dead. I mean, um, I'm kind of thinking I don't mind them dead, but I don't want to offend the sweet little ghost boy. <laughs> this is so weird. I don't know how I feel about the story. It's, it's kind of weird. Um, I think they're fascinating might be, um, a bit of a stretch though. But, um, what are we thinking? When I was your age, I spent hours watching ladybugs and roly-polies in my parents' garden. Okay, ladybugs and roly-polies were different. Those I did play with as a kid. <laughs> Why did you stop? I don't know. I guess I grew up. How sad. I hope that never happens to me. Don't worry, it won't. You're dead. <laughs> Simon. What? What's wrong? It's... it's nothing. Never mind. Look, there was actually something I wanted to talk to you about. Is it about last night? And the door? It is. And more importantly, that key you showed me. What about it? Do you think I could maybe borrow it? Simon looks uneasy, and his hand goes to the pocket where you know he keeps his key. I don't know, Bree. Eleanor said not to unlock that door. Simon, either I need to know what's behind the door, or I'm not going to unlock the door. I mean, I feel like I'm lying is the best way to get this key. <laughs> Saying, I'm not going to unlock it. I just want to look at the key and hold on to it. Um... Ugh, but... Or we could go with honesty of I need to know what's behind that door. But I don't think that will get him to give us the key. I think he's way more loyal to his sister than he is to us. So I feel like I'm not going to unlock the door would be a better way to get the key from him. Are we in agreement? Then why do you need the key? Uh, it's a long story. Too hard to explain. You're not lying, are you? Of course not. <laughs> I just, I just really, really need that key, Simon. You can trust me. I promise. Well, okay. I'll let you borrow my key. On one condition. What's that? Simon taps a blank space on his row of gray and brown moths. 
See this? This is where I'd put the... I am not trying to pronounce that. If I had one. <laughs> this is where I'd put... If I had one. <laughs> Opera what? That word. Also known as the winter moth. I've seen them flying around our house before. But only up in the attic. So what's the problem? Why don't you go up there and catch one? Because I'm... Simon looks at the floor embarrassed and mumbles something. What did you say? I'm scared of the attic. Well, I would be too. That's nothing to be ashamed of or what's there to be scared of. I think that's nothing to be ashamed of is very comforting. Um... Yeah, I think that's a nice comforting way to say it. Um, mm -hmm. Mm. Sorry. <laughs> addicts are scary. That's what makes them addicts. But you can't be brave if you're not scared first, right? I love that. You're right. But I'd still like you to come with me, just in case. Attic of a creepy haunted house. What could go wrong? Okay, so, um... We're both carrying a butterfly net. You tug on the rope and the trap door opens. A ladder slides down from the opening along with a thick cloud of dust. Ugh, when was the last time anyone went up here? I don't know. There's just a bunch of old junk, so we usually don't bother. Ooh boy, this is gonna be creepy. You climb up the ladder and emerge in the darkened attic, then turn to pull Simon up behind you. He sticks close to you, his small hand curled tightly in yours. See? I told you it was scary. Yeah, this is super creepy, or don't worry, I'm here. I mean, again, super creepy would be the honest answer. Um, but don't worry, I'm here seems the more, um, comforting one for the young kid who's afraid. Um, yeah, I just think that's a lot more, um, comforting. But saying this is super creepy is affirming. So... Um, yeah. Thanks, Bree. You peer through the gloom at the accumulated bric-a-brac, your eyes searching for any sign of movements. Out of curiosity, what does this moth look like? How will I... Shh. What? Simon points in the upturned chair to your right, where a dusty moth... Hangs by its legs, nearly blending into the wood grain. Creepy. There it is. How did you spot that? Shh. <laughs> Sorry. You draw closer to the moth, raising your net slowly. Oh, crap. Sorry, I <laughs> did not have time to wait on that one. <laughs> you carefully creep up on the moth and swing your butterfly net down with a thud. <laughs> gotcha. The moth goes into a panic, beating its wings against the mesh of the nets, but it can't break free. You did it, Bree. Now let's get out of here before I get scared again. As Simon starts back down the ladder, you notice a dark shape in the shadowy recesses of the attic, and your blood runs cold. Is it Jonathan? Who's there? Come on, Bree, let's go. I think I see something. You step deeper into the attic. Oh, why are we investigating? The wooden floorboards creaking beneath your feet. As you draw closer, the figure lurches out of the shadows at you. Yup, it's Jonathan. Hi, brother. How's it going? <clears throat> you stumble backward and fall hard against the floorboards. Free! Get off me! You thrash on the floor as Jonathan's weight presses down on you. Your eyes shut tight. Free! It's just a mannequin. Huh? You open your eyes to find a mannequin wearing a velvet dinner jacket on top of you. <laughs> it's blank face inches from your own. But 
but I thought, let's just go, okay? I could have sworn I saw my brother. Am I going crazy? I don't know. Maybe this whole thing is just her going crazy. You shove the mannequin off and take one last look at the darkened corner of the attic before following Simon down the ladder. Interesting. A short while later, you and Simon return to the parlor and you breathe a sigh of relief. Sorry if I scared you, Simon. I don't know what happened back there. It's okay. Told you the attic was a scary place. Yeah, let's just focus on your insect collection. I need to think about something else. Simon looks from the blank space in his collection to the moth and the butterfly net, frowning. What's wrong? Nothing, it's just... Father usually did this parts. I don't know if I want to... to kill him. But if I don't, I'll have to let him go. This way he'll always stay the same forever, and I'll never have to say goodbye. Okay... Well, this, um, is kind of dark and creepy. Um, so, should we let the moth go or should we kill him and keep him forever so we never have to say goodbye? That is so creepy. I mean, um, oh, yeah, it's creepy. It's so creepy to kill it just to pin it to a board oh I think that's really creepy um I'm kind of on the let him go boat but um we did just go up to the attic to catch it to pin it to the board and this is the boys like prize insect collection so maybe we should keep it um I choose? Why do I choose? I don't want to make this choice. <laughs> okay, um. I think I'm gonna say let him go and let me say my reasoning here. Um, because this family is like trapped in this moment of their death, it seems like. So I think it will have a greater meaning of. Yes, this way you're staying on Earth and you never have to say goodbye. But maybe you should, like, go and move on. So I think let him go. But my collection. You don't have to kill insects to admire them, right? They're so much more interesting when they're alive. You're right. Let's, let's let him go. Simon goes to the window and cracks it open just an inch, enough for the moth to flutter out into the wild. Thanks for helping me, Bree. I'm not afraid of the attic anymore. Well, not as much. I am! <laughs> it's a process. Now, do you think I could borrow that key? You hold out your hand and Simon drops the key into your palm. Okay, we got one out of four. Yay! Huh, it's heavier than I expected. Thank you, Simon. You're welcome. You leave the parlor and search the manor for Clarissa, finding her in the dining room with the journal open before her. Bree, we missed you at breakfast. Did you sleep in? Yeah, I guess I was more tired than I thought. What are you working on? Oh, this? It, it's nothing. Come on, you can tell me. Are you writing a story? Clarissa blushes as you sit down beside her. Poetry, actually. It, it's for a boy. His name's Edmund. He works in the shop in town. Oh, I see. Do you, do you have any, you know, advice for getting him to notice me? Be alive? <laughs> um, so I can say I'm not an expert, but I know a little, or actually I prefer girls. So there really seems to be an option here to try to get with um, a ghost, Eleanor. <laughs> I'm thinking I'm not an expert here, but I know a little. I can kind of be helpful. Oh, really? Well, there's this one guy. His name's Victor. Do you like him? I, I think so. It's just maybe not the best time. You know what I mean? 
Not at all. Life is short, Bree. Why waste it wondering what could have been? Speak for yourself. Hey, at least I'm trying. I was thinking of sending Edmund a poem in the mail to tell him how I feel. Poor girl. <laughs> I know it's a little bold, but I so love to write poetry. In that case, I think it's a wonderful idea. What do you have so far? That's just the problem. I can't seem to find my feel to put my feelings into words. Everything comes out sounding stupid and childish. Maybe you could write about how he makes you feel when you see him. Well, I get very nervous and my heart starts to beat faster and it becomes so difficult to get even the simplest words out like, like you stole my voice or something. That sounds like a good place to start. You're right. How about this? You tend to shop but are a thief for you have stolen my voice from me. I like it. Keep going. The words don't come and so I write. What's a good rhyme for rights? Hmm, let me think. The words don't come, and so I write, by the flickering candlelights. Or, the words don't come, and so I write, I know I'll think of you tonight. Um, I think by the flickering candlelight makes more sense, because the words don't come, and so I write, I know I'll think of you tonight, it's suddenly like, going to an entirely different idea. But by the flickering candlelight, we're still on the same subject of writing. So I'm thinking that one. But it's daytime. I'm not writing this by candlelight. Oh, sorry. <laughs> so, candles are romantic. It doesn't have to be totally realistic. Okay, okay. Let's change the rhyme scheme for the last bit. How about... When the sun burns out and the earth turns cold. Well, that is dark. Um, and all the flowers bow their heads. I'll think on things I left untold. Clarissa taps her pen on the paper, trying to think of a rhyme. I'll think of what I left untold, and all of the words that went unsaid. I'll think of what I left untold, like, how much for a loaf of bread? <laughs> what? <laughs> Definitely we should go with, like, how much for a loaf of bread. Because that is the most romantic thing you can say to a boy. <laughs> oh my. Um... And all the words that went unsaid, I think, is definitely the better option for a love poem. That's great! You're so good at this, Bree. Hardly. You're the poet here. I'm just helping. Let's see what you've got. Read it back to me. Clarissa holds the journal out in front of her and clears her throat. You tend to shop but are a thief for four... Wow. You tend to shop at our thief, for you have stolen my voice from me. The words don't come, and so I write by the flickering candlelights. When the sun burns out and the earth turns cold, and all the flowers bow their heads, I'll think of what was left untold and all the words that went unsaid. So, what's next? Well, I either mail it, or I get nervous and throw it in the fire. <laughs> Surely there's a middle ground here. I think you should... Set it aside for now, or send it to Edmund? Oh, I'm so torn! Because I want to encourage her, but, um, she's dead, and Edmund's no longer around. Um, he's probably dead, too, or really old. Um... So, set it aside for now is the realistic answer, but I want to encourage her. Oh, what should I do, guys? What should I do? Getting nervous, so I'm playing with my hair. <laughs> uh, I mean, she can't send it to Edmund is the thing. Option two? Really? We're gonna send it to a dead guy? Okay, we're gonna encourage her. I I'm doing it. I don't know, Bree. Suddenly that sounds absolutely crazy. Yeah, probably because you're dead and he's possibly dead. Probably dead. I can't remember what year this was, and so I don't know. 
Don't you want him to know how you feel, though? It's a little late, but, you know. Well, yes, but still, I'm scared. There's nothing to be scared of. Want me to put it in the mailbox? No, that's okay. I'll do it myself. Someday. You're already out of time. <laughs> Although, come to think of it, it feels like it's been forever since I even saw our mailman. Uh-oh. This was a bad idea. Clarissa frowns, a far away look in her eye. Well, I'm sure it just seems that way. Nothing to worry about. You're not dead or anything. Yeah, I guess. Clarissa shakes her head and her usual smile returns to her face. Thanks for helping me, Bree. I wish I had some way to repay you. Uh, you might actually. You know those keys you and your siblings have? You know about those? I do, and I was wondering if I could borrow yours, just for a day or two. This is a completely normal request. Um, I want to say yes, Brie, really, but... Eleanor told you, told you not to? She was very emphatic about it. Clarissa. Okay, so I can either say I think there's something weird going on at Braidwood Manor, which is the truth, or we're friends, aren't we? Which is also the truth. I never thought I would be friends with a ghost, but, um, yeah. Um, so, do we want to say I think there's something weird going on and raise her suspicion even further? Or are we going to take the nice, innocent route like we did with Simon of just trying to get her to give it to us because we're such good friends? What is the best option here? I, I just worry if I say that there's something weird going on. What that could prompt from her. Especially since now she's thinking about the mailman and... She's already a little suspicious. Um. Gonna go with, we're friends, aren't we? Friends help each other, and right now I'm asking for your help. We are friends, but, but what? Nothing, I guess. I don't know what you're up to, Brie, but I'll help you. Yes! Clarissa pulls an antique key like Simon's from a pocket of her dress and pushes it across the table to you. Yay! Two out of four! Thank you, Clarissa. Look, if you're going to, to try to convince Thomas to give you his key, I should warn you. He's not exactly the generous type, and he certainly doesn't share my high opinion of you. That's kind of what I was thinking. Well, maybe I can change his mind. Very funny, Brie. Just then, Eleanor steps into the dining room, and you quickly slip the key out of sight. Oh, hi, Eleanor. Eleanor narrows her eyes suspiciously. Someone looks guilty. What have you two been up to? We were just writing poetry. Yeah, it was a timed one, so I had... <laughs> and it was the truth. Bree was helping me with a poem I'm working on. That's wonderful. I didn't know you were a poet, Bree. Neither did I, actually. I suppose we all have our secrets. Bree, would you come with me for a moment? Of course. Speaking of we all having secrets, what's yours? You follow Eleanor out to the foyer where she pauses before the manor doors. Bree, about this morning. I'm sorry I ran off. I just... I didn't expect that, that's all. Don't be sorry. I'm the one who so should apologize. I didn't mean to make you uncomfortable. I just want answers. Eleanor looks over her shoulder at you, a slight smile curving her lips. You didn't make me uncomfortable. Before you can reply, Eleanor throws open the manor doors and strides out into the wintry landscape beyond. You hurry to keep up. What on earth is going on? Where are we going? Nowhere in particular. I just wanted, I just wanted to take a turn about the grounds and thought you might like to join me. Was I wrong? No. You walk alongside Eleanor down the front steps of Braidwood Manor, the snow falling gently around you. Wow, it's so beautiful out here. Eleanor looks up at the sky and nods, a snowflake lands in her hair and stays there, unmelting. Bree, I'd like us to get to know one another better. My father always said that no friendship is truly sealed until you've shared a secret with each other. Ooh. 
Perhaps we can do just that. What do you think? Yes, share a secret with me, please. I think that sounds wonderful, or I'm not ready to share my secrets just yet. I mean, I don't know what kind of secret we're going to be sharing with her, but um, she's a ghost. It's not like she's going to be telling anyone. And we need to know her secrets. So I think this is worth the diamonds. I really think this is worth the diamonds. Um, I hope that you're going to agree. Yes. Okay. That sounds wonderful. I was hoping you'd say that. Come with me. You follow Eleanor across the grounds until you come to a frozen fountain. Eleanor sits on the rim and pats the spot beside her. Bree, can I ask you a, a personal question? Of course. Your brother, what happened to him? You avert your eyes, your throat suddenly closing up. Tell us. I'm sorry, that was a terrible thing to ask. You don't have to tell me if you don't want to. It's okay. I'm ready to talk about it, or but I'd rather not get into it. I mean, we have to share our secrets. Um, and I want to know what happened. I, I want her to be ready to talk about it just so that we can learn what exactly happened. Um, so I'm thinking option one. Um, because, I mean, we told her we'd be sharing stuff and um yeah i want to know i want to know <laughs> you look out across the wide expanse of snow your eyes prickling with hot tears he died in in a car crash it was around Christmas and he was home for the holidays. He was still in high school then. We were we were actually going to be at the same college this year. He was driving back home after a holiday party and he just went off the road. The same road he'd driven a thousand times. So, yeah, what was different this time? You fall silent and Eleanor looks abashed. What happens? How am I involved? I'm sorry, Bree. You don't have to tell me that if you don't want to. Was I like calling him? Was he on the phone with me? Is that why? Like, why? I know what it's like to lose loved ones. There's nothing harder. You nod, blinking back tears. Eleanor lays her hand on top of yours and smiles sadly. But at least you have your health rights. You laugh in spite of yourself. You have a funny way of looking at things. Being dead will do that to you. Eleanor, don't look so gloomy. I was just trying to lighten the mood. Speaking of which, I suppose it's my turn to share secrets. This should be good. I can't imagine what sort of secrets a ghost might have. I'm afraid you'll be disappointed. It's rather embarrassing, actually. Eleanor looks down, her fingers fidgeting with the end of her braid. You see, I've, I've never been kissed before. I was hoping for a better secret than that! There's creepy stuff going on at the house. Tell me that. That's your big secret? Mm-hmm. Disappointed? Yes. <laughs> on the contrary, I think we should change that or I think it's adorable. So are we going to try to pick up the ghost? <laughs> oh my. Um, I mean, I know in The Sims you have an option to romance ghosts, so according to The Sims, it is possible. <laughs> option two? I think it's adorable. I suppose I can live with that. You stand up from the fountain and rub your hands together for warmth. So, where to next? Eleanor shakes her head, her expression clearing. Oh, right, there's something I wanted to show you. I was hoping we'd learn something. I mean, I guess we learned more about the death of Jonathan, so something came out of that. You follow Eleanor across the grounds of Braidwood Manor and pass under a canopy of twisted branches. 
Where are we going? Please don't be luring me to kill me. You'll see. It's not far now. You come to a graveyard at the edge of the woods. Overhead, a lone raven peers down its beak at you. What is this place, Eleanor? This is the family plot, Bree, where my siblings and I are buried. But why are we here? I come here sometimes to be alone. There's something oddly comforting about it. Comforting about the graveyard where you're buried. Okay. It's bittersweet, I suppose, to know that my siblings and I are down there, underneath the earth, where no one can hurt us again. I know it's odd, but it makes me feel safe somehow. Oh, I'm not sure I understand, or I think I know what you mean. I mean, I don't understand. I'm not a ghost. <laughs> um... But, I, I guess I can also see where she's coming from. So, either option. I think I'm just gonna say, not sure I understand. What happened to you was so, so awful. Why would you want to be reminded of that? Don't feel sorry for me, Bree, please. I couldn't bear that. I still, we don't know who poisoned them, and her throat was slit, which was different. So did she do the poisoning? There is, mm, uh, I, I, I don't know. I don't think she's as innocent as she seems. I just want to share this place with you. You walk slowly through the small cemetery, reading each headstone in turn. Don't the children ever come here? How can they not know that they're that they're dead when this is just outside their door? I've forbidden them from going too far beyond the manor. And they obey you? For the most part, I once caught Simon looking for dragonflies by the pond, but otherwise they are very well behaved. If any of them were to find this place, I'm not sure what I would do. You come to two headstones, close together with the names William and Rose. Are these your parents? Your father's date of death is five years after the rest of yours. Yes, he... he was the one who found us. It destroyed him. He left for Northbridge and eventually drank himself to death. They brought him home for the burial. I, I'm so sorry, Eleanor. It's quite alright. He was a wonderful father when I was still alive. I'll always have those memories of him. And your mother? Eleanor's expression goes suddenly cold, and she turns to leave, her thick braids swinging behind her. Ooh. Don't bother mourning her. What's the story there? That grave is empty. Is she behind the door? What? Eleanor strides off into the woods, leaving you standing alone in the cemetery. Eleanor waits. If Eleanor's mother died the same day as her children, where's the body? Oh no, her... Her... She's the one that had her throat slits. And where is her ghost now? Is she trapped behind... She's trapped behind the door. She's evil. Ooh. So we're halfway through... And, um, I've been streaming for nearly two hours now. Um, I did not think this would take as long as it has been taking. Um, I am really intrigued by this story, though, and I want to continue on and find out what happens. Um, I think I might do that another day, though. Or I'll just do the chapters individually in regular videos and, um, release them normally. Um... Let me know in the comments if you would like me to do the final three chapters in another live stream or if you would be happy with me just releasing them as normal videos. Um, but my voice is starting <laughs> to go a little bit from reading all of this. And, um, well, hi, Juliet. Did you want to come and say hi on the live stream? <laughs> well, um... I think I'm going to call it there for today. I am very intrigued. I really want to know where this is going. I think the mom is behind that door. And I think it's a very bad idea to unlock it. Um, but I want to learn more. I want to know what the deal is with Jonathan. Oh, there's so many questions I have. 
Um, so I hope that you guys enjoyed this and that you want to learn more too because I really want to explore the rest of this together. Um, so thank you so much for tuning in to my first ever live stream or for watching this on the replay. Um, I really enjoyed doing this with you. Uh, so let me know what other kind of live content you would like me to do in the future. Um, I hope you all have a great Halloween. Let me know in the comments what your plans are or if you're watching this on the replay, let me know what you did. Um, thank you so much for watching this video. Please leave a like and if you want to keep watching, there should be another video popping up right here or at least there will be once I'm able to go back and edit it. <laughs> um, if you haven't, be sure to, to subscribe to become part of the ineffable community because you are ineffable.